Hey, howdy, hey. I feel like speedrunning as a game type or a mode of challenge has always been a bit mystifying and uh, it can be very intimidating to get into. It always has for me uh, in my experience, but I've always I've always looked onto with it with a definitely a certain sense of respect and and awe at it. I watched watch GDQ every year since a, around when it started, just thinking like, oh man, I can never do this, but it's so cool. It's so cool, and I've, I've long, I've long like wondered and hoped, like, ah, I wish I didn't have to be this way. I, I wish, I wish it could be easier, you know. And there, there's some like perceived sense of difficulty that, you know, definitely some difficulty is there for sure. Obviously, you know, it's incredibly, incredibly high access, like tech skill and pathing and routing and. Um, all sorts of stuff to think about, but a lot of it I think can be like it, it, it can be imagined fear on on top of that. Not that it's not valid, of course, but it uh, the the space makes it seem maybe even even harder than it already is, and it's 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 plenty hard, you know, not to 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 make things even more difficult. The, these these communities have been have been working on their games for a really long time. They're very close, they're very tight and in, and tech is difficult, and just, just to get started and like like feel like you're in the in the playing ground, the, the skill floor can be very high, but I don't think it, it it has to be like this, and I hope that as, as games continue, they, they fall away from this, just in general, because now recently I've been uh, super, super entrenched in, in Stardew Valley speedrunning, and Stardew Valley speedrunning is, is a really, really interesting case because the the game, actual, the actual base game, I think is very far away from what people assume of speedrunning. You know, you're relaxing, uh, kind of like a, the work and social simulator, but the speedrunning community has managed to really, really take hold with, with creators and players in, in a really novel way because you don't have to, you don't have to beat the whole game to, uh, to, to do most of the categories. Usually, usually it is a confined goal, you know, something, something akin to like a level or a, uh, like, uh, like certain, a certain percent speed running, like, like, I don't know, like, like, like 50% or something. And, uh, usually, usually these are things like complete a certain objective or get to a certain point in the game. And they're exciting and fun and people are e extremely competitive about them. But the, I think the big, um, break here, at least in difference, is that the, uh, the, the the tech, the the know-how, it's it's definitely there. But it's not impossible. It's not it's not complicated. And uh, with with the right intel, I think that someone relatively inexperienced can do it. And I, I, I uh, have have and on on multiple on multiple cases. I'm not really that experienced with the game at all. And to test this theory, I invited one of my friends, Try, who is uh, lovely lovely creator you should definitely check his stuff out but i got him to do a, a co-op speed run on the on uh the the stardew mines and the thing that really really struck me about it was that he he does not play stardew ever and he does not enjoy the game but he really enjoyed this and it really made me think and wonder about like you know the the differences that that it that it creates and that made like like that stardew speedrunning made the game fast paced enough and objective based enough to pull somebody who that type of game is not at all for into a like a much more positive relationship with the game Obviously, again, you know, like the tech is there, the 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 sense of of difficulty is there. You know, people are competing to race times, and that's like that's that's like the main thing. You know, the goal is going faster. But this is one that um, beginners can pick up. And why why is that? Uh, the you know the because the the goal at least in in most of the the Stardew speedruns, and I, I promise this this all this all is building. This is all this is all building to a. a cohesive point I promise but the the goals are simple and telegraphed as as games I think tend to be and, and should be and the 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 one that I did with with try and some other people was get to a certain floor of the mines that is 
extremely telegraphed to get to a certain get to a certain point uh no holds barred um couple of couple of rules like like no 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 glitches in the category that we're doing but other than them the the world is your oyster um you know there, there's a couple of of ways to uh advance your advantages in that way you know like choosing um specific days to go to the mines or you know taking a certain path in the mines but the 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 mechanism is simple you uh break rocks in the mines which is not a, a complicated task uh and you kill monsters which is also not a complicated task swing your sword swing your pickaxe for the chance to get stairs and stairs take you from one level to another and you get to 50 the race is over your time is clocked in. This is a very simple task, and is usually one of the simpler things in in just gener generic Stardew play. Uh, going going through the mines is just it's it's th th there's some combat, and it's really the only area of the game where there is combat. You know, the the monsters are hanging out in the mines doing their monster thing. By other than that, it's 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 extremely simple. You just move around and uh, break break the rocks. The the uh, the rocks are on a grid, and you break them, and you have a chance of the stairs going, and that's it. There's there's really no more to it than that. And as most um, you know, as as things get closer and closer to the skill ceiling, uh, th there's little there's little tricks you can do. You know, there's there's certain places where stairs won't spawn. There's ways to increase your luck. There's certain items that you're gunning for. There's certain strategies with uh, when choosing to advance into the second day. On, but at its core, it is simple, and that's really really important because. You know that thrill is still there. The 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 race is still on, and there's no there's no there's no suffocation in in those those skill ceiling things because everyone everyone um, has access to that skill floor where it's break the rocks, kill the monsters, get to the stairs. And that that makes sense, and that's achievable. That's achievable by somebody who just picked up the game and did and headed there is their is their first thing because the game clearly shows you the the roots and the core and only when you're competing at the highest level looking for every possible advantage you know presumably having done this multiple times only then do things begin to get complicated and as far as you know just games go i think that a lot of the the complication in in speed runs that are often seen is that you know the limitations of of older games like mario 64 specifically comes to mind in this instance because a lot of the tech there a lot of the the access is in uh you know movement options like you'll 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 see and hear the the like the jokes and the videos of like mario like glitching in and out of reality because of the uh like the the, the technical limitations of that game and i'm not i'm not extremely familiar with that but this is the like i guess the showcase game for like odd movement and uh complicated complicated movement mechanics to you know get in and out of places extremely quickly uh skipping certain things but as as games become more uh more i guess modern as as, as games continue to come out those sorts of problems are rightfully so in a lot of cases left in the past and sometimes they are uh preferentially integrated instead but the difference is that they are clearly instructed to the player like in the case of celeste that has actual wave dashing but it is a it is a intentional mechanic that the game eventually shows you and it shows you the tech it says look you can do this to do that and there's no secret here this is this is this is a movement option there's there's no um there's there's no figuring this one exactly out it, there, there's no um, you know further further nuance if the game wants you to do this it's not it's not you fighting the game is the game giving you an additional tool and that's that level I guess is is the you know main I think like like demystifier it's either you versus the game or are you working with the game to do as well as possible and I think that that is the the that the latter uh, case is definitely in play in games like Celeste where the game 
and honestly, that's 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 pretty cool because that's one of the big big themes of Celeste, where you're you are working with the game to do better rather than fighting against the game as an obstacle. And the same thing is true with Stardew, and that Stardew very clearly tells you like this is the obstacles. Let's figure out how to do this together, and we're gonna tell you what to do every step along the way. And then even Stardew has some of those extremely advanced mechanics. Uh, like if you're looking for that, you know, looking to if you're not a familiar, you know go for animation canceling and start it which has been boiled down to be relatively simple in the end and you can do like keybinds for it but just as the example of you know where the the ceiling goes with stardew in another game i i recently picked up and ultimately made me think of this this whole thing is a um it was uh shown at the summer games fest uh, that ultimately got me to pick it up is neon white which has a lot of speed running mechanics built into the game and whether whether or not the purpose of uh the game is to speedrun or to be speedrunning as as a mechanic i don't think matters for whether or not you are fighting the game or fighting with the game as an ally against against a common goal neon white is a is an fps it is a 3d platformer it is a speedrunner type game you you are you are timed from the very beginning and there's all sorts of movement options and <clears throat> various tech to engage in but again, the game shows you this, and the movement is smooth, the um, mechanics are telegraphed, they are explained to you in detail, and only when you reach that, that, that absolute skill ceiling, when you're looking for every possible advantage, you find like micro, micro tech that can give you an advantage in there. And this, this is a game, and the reason, the reason I ultimately bring it up is because this is a game that was designed to be speedrun. This, this is a game that emphasizes speedrun. There's even uh, a, a, a ranking in the game. You can, ra you can race against friends, or you can track your times globally and you know, try to become the number one ranked player for every level. And they have a ranking system for every letter, for every level that is just like, here's first place and everybody after them and see if you can beat their time. This is a, a game that you know, is, is, is much more technical than Stardew or it's it's more much more technical just because it's got fps elements you are quickly moving around and shooting things and you are doing advanced 3d movements any any 3d platformer is gonna is gonna require a a, a decent bit of of technical ability but again the difference in the end comes down to what the game is willing to teach you and that's that's probably the thing that i love most about it is that you you look and feel like you're doing complicated maneuvers in neon white for sure you 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 when you know you'll, you'll have somebody watch it or you'll watch somebody else play and it's like oh my goodness they are they are moving and jumping and shooting around like 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 what the hell is going on right now and that was that was how i originally felt looking at the game I was like oh my goodness that is ridiculous like like how do they get that good but I'm, the game is a good teacher the game shows you the ropes carefully and intentionally from the very beginning, and they build these lessons ultimately into a, a toolbox, a very intentional and telegraphed toolbox. And in the end, these factors make speedrunning, which I think is I think is an invaluable and incredible part of of gaming. If you know, if I haven't already made that clear, just the way that I'm, I'm talking about it, it is is incredibly important to be able to play games however you want. You know, let let alone the accessibility issue of just saying like like, well, I want to have fun the way that I want to have fun. It is it is a different set of, of challenges. Like this game has an end. How fast can we get there? It doesn't it doesn't matter what we do. The objective is to win. Uh, the as quickly as possible. Let's let's make this a race. You know, it's the it's it's an objective as as old as time. Like I, I can do it faster than you. Come on now, and games when done well, I think are going to ultimately have those features integrated in because a good game teaches you the ropes. It telegraphs the objectives. It tells you how to do things in. In a ramping in a ramping procedure you know it, it teaches you step one and then you get step one combined with step two and then 
you know, step two, maybe, maybe step three's thrown in, and eventually it's like Gauntlet. Step one, step two, step three are all on display here. Like, give it some practice, and then, you know, get the whole thing done. And that's another emphasis of both of these things, is the ability to practice over and over mechanics. You know, they, like, almost sandbox levels of, of practice to give these mechanics a, a try. In, in the case of Neon White, some some levels are as as short as as nine or ten seconds, but there is still uh, major tech on display and, and major room for improvement and the ability to practice practice the things that are going to get you to improve. And that's another really really important part of it is the being able to to work on these things, the game giving you chances to work on these things. And to be fair, in in some cases, you know, games are big, games are long. Uh, the like I don't know, like 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 Persona 5, it's probably a little bit tougher because it's it's harder to practice and get down there in the dirt. But that is another game that you know, despite the size of it and despite the the amount of content available to you for the for the the general purpose, it telegraphs what it wants you to do. It says, here's your tools, here's how to use them, and there's obviously a lot more bells and whistles going on in that game you know that it almost makes it a moot point in the end but that is so important in game design the intentionality of of the play and not just from a like a, a narrative or a a game building perspective in in like a, a meta sense but actually playing the game how do i win and what are the steps that i take to get there okay well Here's what you do, step by step, and we're gonna break it down, and we're gonna make it simple. And as games continue to take these steps and make these choices, I think that it makes speedrunning a lot more accessible. It makes it the the ability to engage in casual speedrunning, you know, with and like you know, like the, the most classic example of this is like running running Mario levels like at the at the absolute base levels you know because it is just so telegraphed and simple what you're supposed to do and you know maybe maybe that's maybe that's a bad example but just the the concept of get to the goal as a game objective is perfect for this because the game if done well will show you the way you have a simple objective and if there's complications on the way there the game will show you either through the narrative process instructions puzzle solving that is designed to get you to understand like oh okay so to do to do this type of jump you know you got to you got to do like you got to like jump off the wall or something like oh okay you can that's that's how you do that and that's a that's a desired game mechanic that they want to highlight but and to this point it should be it should be accessible and it should be able to be casual the games should be reachable and this like excitement you know the race should be should be reachable from someone who is just is is simply interested in it not to say that it doesn't require practice not to say that it doesn't require lots of lots of investment into tech and research and you know saying like oh i gotta i gotta i gotta work on this part like i'm specifically not good at the uh like like i'm not good in in neon white at this um the uh th there's like a, a bomb parry that you can do because a a thing like a rare a rare piece of info that the game doesn't really explicitly tell you is that when you hit a projectile uh with with any of your weapons you move slightly faster for a second and uh hitting hitting your own projectiles is possible with a certain weapon and i'm i'm not incredible at that you know so that's something i've, I've been working on but it's definitely going to require all of those things for sure but games can reach players halfway there i don't know if i'm like and I'm, I'm sure that there's exceptions to that but games can aim to meet players halfway there, to create more, not more casual even experiences, but more accessible experiences where, you know, players can feel good and look good while doing it and it's much easier to get there because we're, we're, we're at that point, you know, games are, the, the, the technical limitations are no longer there for a game to be horrendously explained, you have no idea what's going on, 
or like you have no idea even how to play it or, or, or do anything. Uh, game, games are definitely at that point, and they're making speed runs, speed running more more casual, more accessible, and I think that as we go forward, it's going to be more and more demystified because games are becoming more accessible. Games are becoming easier to understand, very intentionally, because a good experience should be easy to understand in that way, where it's not frustrating just to put your hands on it. And I think that we're gonna continue to see with, with games like Stardew, interestingly enough, you know, like Neon White, like, um, I'd, I'd say like, like, Mario, uh, 2D Mario always always comes to mind for this. One, one that I found rather easy to get into was uh, Switch Sports when it came out. Um, games like this are going to keep coming out, and they're going to keep making the experience more casual. And I don't think it's going to it's going to devalue the experience either. It is going to heighten the experience because it's more available, and more people will be able to engage in it. I think that's a really good thing. It makes me excited for the future. That's all for now. If you, I don't know, if you if you enjoyed it, or dis disagree with anything I said, or want to keep the the discussion going, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you like what I'm putting out, hit that MF and like button and uh, subscribe for more. Cause I got more I got more ideas and more stuff to say.